radical ideas, and we want a simple, gentle introduction that the average person can take to heart in a practical way. So, how are we going to think about life in a radically new way? What is it, for example, that makes a tomato really a whole tomato? Obviously, something is organizing all of those molecules in such a way that an electric field has caused an organization which is more than cellular. It's more than atomic. It's a very large, very coherent electric field that causes life. If we understand what builds those fields better, we can serve life. And so that's our goal. So here's how I suggest we begin to think about this. Supposing you had a seed that you wanted to test to see if it's alive or dead. The essential way you find out if a seed is alive or dead, you plant it in the soil and you wait to see if it germinates, obviously. Now, what is it that determines whether a seed germinates? As an electrician, I look at this problem to see if the seed is able to attract the nutrient, the food it needs. If the seed can gather to itself the nutrient, it begins to germinate. Obviously, it is the water that brings with it the nutrient to the seed. So, in effect, the seed is going to be able to germinate and bring life to itself if it's able to change the angle and steer in, like a tractor beam, the approaching water molecule. So the essential question an electrician has to ask to see what makes a seed alive is what gives it the strength to have an electric field strong enough to suck in and attract a water molecule. Pause. Recording. So what is it about water molecules that enable the electric field to be assembled to be sucked in? If we look at the way in which water naturally organizes itself, we see that when water is arranged in biologic structures, it actually becomes more orderly than ice. And in extreme cases, we've seen that water actually organizes itself into pentagonal, that is, five-sided, and dodecahedral structures. Here's some images. So in effect, what happens is that the water arranges itself into what might be seen as a three-dimensional fractal to enable charge compression. Charge compression being the key word. We recall to mind the Albert Zent Georgi Nobel Laureate Prize winning work at Marine Woods Hole Biological Laboratories where he showed that in electronic biology and cancer that it's the extreme orderliness of the water that's the difference between a healthy cell and a cancer cell. Now it turns out the nature of that orderliness in water and its charge field is based on essentially two things. The hydrogen in the water appears to have golden mean ratio in the emissions of its, of its uh, it's called the Balmer series. It just means that it's probably true that hydrogen at the monoatomic level is in fact implosive. This is what's behind, for example, Dr. Pat Flanagan's uh, monoatomic hydrogen microhydrate. And in that, he also takes that monoatomic implosive hydrogen atom, compression again, implosion, at the center of water, and he tucks it inside a dodecahedron, pentagonal dodecahedron, let you see even here, the white balls. He tucks it inside a dodecahedron of water molecules, which in the technical literature is called a clathrate cage of water molecules. So these are all examples of the fact that Mother Nature appears to use golden mean ratio optimized self-similarity to create charge compression to create life. For example, again, it appears that almost every living biologic protein, every living protein, is in fact five-sided. Visualize, for example, the top-down view of DNA, where you have the 5-10 view. This is all golden mean ratio, golden mean spiral based in DNA. So whether it's DNA or every living protein, it appears Mother Nature has, has used this golden mean ratio to create a path called implosion where waves add and multiply non-destructively, something called their phase velocities, to turn compression into acceleration, sometimes called gravity. This ability to turn compression into acceleration, called non-destructive compression, appears to be, be the key to not just making gravity from charge, but making life itself. This is a very important point. So, what we want to do is first prove the concept that, in fact, life force 
is the ability to invite charge compression and then we can show that there are certain electrical environments which will cause seeds to germinate and they will in fact enable compression. Example, a fractal is science's best way to invite compression. It turns out that Mother Nature uses things that are like fractals, that is self-similar. Visualize a pine cone. Visualize a fern tree. Visualize the layers of an onion. Visualize the little doll inside the bigger doll. These are all images where the inside is so self-similar to the outside that it invites non-destructive compression and this ability to suck in charge turns out to be the essence of how to create an electric field that will cause a seed to germinate. Remember, in our traditional history we've had too many names for the electric field of life. It's been called Chi, Orgone, Baraka, Shaktipat, we have or waves of Eck. We have too many names for this principle and we need to understand that there is a unified field as Christ and Einstein would emphasize, and that in order to understand that unified field, we must understand our universe in terms of a rigorous language, and in physics, that's the language of the symmetry of charge. And that is the unified field for physics. A measurable example, if we measure the charge wave that comes off an essential oil made from roses that's very healing, we see that the electric field that came off that charge wave that heals has a self-organizing nature. It looks like a caduceus. It's initializing this compression wave. So if you visualize a rose, you're in fact visualizing its electric field. And the electric field means you could zoom in, you could compress, you could fall into the center. The wave inside the wave could compress forever. Let's translate this into something very vivid for your imagination. In Russia, they had whole groups of school children who were blind, who were taught over years to uh, create a very specific state of consciousness which we might call bliss, ecstasy, transcendence, creativity, or even enlightenment. And th this very specific state of consciousness, this bliss state, enabled these large groups of blind children to in fact see even though they were blindfolded. What enabled this perception? they were instructed psychologically to very clearly imagine themselves in pristine and gorgeous nature. And when they did, their body would enter into a well-defined and measurable electric state called bliss that allowed them perception, peak perception, seeing through their skin even if they're blind. Now, Professor Karatkov measured this electric state and it became the basis of our bliss tumor. And the electric state, one of its primary indicators was the harmonics of the brain waves, the EEG, came into that same golden mean ratio to make the caduceus. So to simplify, if your body becomes convinced it's in nature, it says, oh boy, I'm going to suck in charge now because in fact this field enables compression. And compression enables the charge distribution called life. So what happens? Your body makes itself into golden mean ratio, like a great big pine cone, invites compression, sucks in charge called implosion, begins getting the voltage from gravity that we call bliss, and the TM meditators even float and make gravity at that point. Your brain waves come into golden mean ratio, and you begin inviting your world to embed or fall into your body. So, whether it's a seed, a tomato, your body or your planet, things become alive when they can attract charge because in the very center an infinite number of waves can converge non-destructively and that permission to touch for that number of different waves creates perfect charge distribution, the result of perfect charge compression. And that charge radiance is the aura you see from a saint with a halo, it's the Curlian photograph, it's the emoto, the sensitive crystallization processes in the blood. These are all ways for simply imaging the radiated projective charge field, the chi, the ka, the ba, which is life itself. So, if we can teach our children to in invite compression, then we can teach them to sustain life. Blood itself is nourished when it in 